In this problem, we have a region bounded by the graphs of y equals x, y equals 3, and x equals 0. And we have to rotate it about the line y equals 7, and then find the volume of the resulting solid. So we're going to use something called the washer method. So we'll start by graphing our region. So this is the y-axis. This will be the x-axis. So we have x and y. It's a really nice problem, I think. This is a nice one because the, um, the axis of revolution is y equals 7, so it's a little bit different. So y equals x uh, looks like this. y equals 3 looks like this. And then x equals 0 looks like this. So let me just do them over here. So this is y equals x. And then y equals 3 is a horizontal line like this. And then x equals 0 would be a vertical line right here. So put all three of these together. I'll, I'll use a different color here. So put this one together with this one together with this one. And you get this picture down here. So there's x. There's y equals 3. There's x equals 0. Okay, and then 7 is here. So I always like to use a dotted line for uh, my axis of revolution. And so we're spinning it here. It's really important in these problems um, that you draw the picture and draw the rectangle. So now we'll draw the rectangle. Okay, so now we're going to identify the key components. So big R is the full distance. Oh, also, we have a vertical rectangle, so we have functions of x. And so big R is this distance here. It's the full distance from the far end of the rectangle to the axis of revolution. Again, it's the full distance, and it's big R of x. Little r of x is the little distance. It's this little piece here, and here's our little baby r, little r of x. It's the distance from the close end to the axis. If you can always draw big R and little r, that gives you a really good chance of getting these 100% correct. Okay, so this distance here is 7. This distance here is x. So big R of x is equal to 7 minus x. Okay, you take, you take the 7 and then you take away this distance and it gives you 7 minus x. This number here is 3. So no matter where you draw your rectangle, little r of x is always going to be 4, right? 7 minus 3, so 4, right? It'll be, it'll be 7 minus this distance here, which is 7 minus 3, which is 4. Or you can just look at it and say, oh, yeah, that's 4. All right, so the formula that will give us the volume has a pi, and we're going with respect to x, so from 0 to, oh, what's this here? This should be 3, because this is 3, and this is y equals x, so they're both 3's. So from 0 to 3, and it's big R squared, so 7 minus x, quantity squared, minus, and then little r squared, so 4 squared dx. So this is the integral that will give us the volume. Let's go ahead and grind this out. So the volume will be equal to pi, integral from 0 to 3. We can use a formula to multiply this out. Um, you know what, if you like, uh, this is what I'm going to do. Check this out. Watch this. I'm going to switch the 7 and the x because it's bothering me. You might say, oh, you can't do that. Yes, you can. Check this out. This is really cool. If you ever have something like 7 minus x squared and you look at it and you're like, I don't want to multiply that out, what you can do is you can write it as x minus 7 squared. You can do that. As long as it's being squared or this power is even or as long as you have an absolute value, you can do that. Here's why. Watch this. You can pull out a negative 1 and write it like this. Clever, right? Negative 1 times x is negative x. Boom, there it is. Negative 1 times negative 7 is positive 7. Boom, there it is. And then you square this one, and then you square this one. And that's 1. So it checks, right? So all day long, you can switch those as long as your exponent is even. So it just made it easier for me to, to multiply it out. So pi integral 0 to 3. So you square the first one, so that gives you x squared. You multiply these and double them. So 7x times 2 is 14x. And then you square the last one, so that gives you uh, 49. 
And then you still have the minus and the 16. Going kind of fast. Um, the formula here is this one. It's a minus b squared. And this is a squared minus 2ab plus b squared. So we squared the x. We got x squared. 7x times 2. That's the 2ab part. That's negative 14x. And then the b squared is the 49. So this is equal to pi definite integral from 0 to 3, x squared minus 14x, and 49 minus 16 is 33. Okay, we have this quadratic thing, and we just integrate this. So we can just use the power rule for each piece. This will be pi bracket. So integrating this one will give us x cubed over 3. Integrating this one will give us 14x uh, squared over 2, which is just really 7x squared, right? Because you're dividing. 14 over 2 is 7. So this will give us 7x squared. And then integrating the 33 will give us 33x. And we're going from 0 to 3. So you first plug in the 3. So it'll be 3 cubed over 3 minus 7 times 3 squared, which is 9, plus 33 times 3. Plugging in 3s for all of the x's. Then you subtract and you plug in 0. And the good news is they all go away. So you just get 0. So this is going to be, let's see, pi. Uh, you lose a copy of the 3 here, so you have 3 squared. So you have 9 minus 63 plus 99. Wow, okay. So this is equal to... All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use the calculator here. I, it's, this is not worth taking a chance. I got 45. <laughs> so, so 45 pi. And that should be the volume. So kind of a tedious computation. Not too bad. Again, um, the hardest part of these problems is the beginning, the setup, figuring out your big R and your little R. Once, once you figure this out and you set all this up, then it's not so bad. I hope this video has been helpful.